Thank you. Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> Next 20 minutes, uh, we are going to cover a couple of different, uh, two different use cases. One is uh, focused on Cisco Data Center compliance. The second is how do we use code for network operations? I am Gabi Sapodanu, technical marketing engineer with Cisco Systems, covering uh, basically I'm focused on Cisco Data Center APIs and integrations. Here's the agenda. First section, uh, I have a few slides and the demo that will focus on Cisco DNS Center compliance. The second section covers infrastructure as code and some of the options we have to use code like Python as you can Ansible for operations. The last section covers developer resources. It is a very short section with a number of different references for network engineers or developers where they can find uh, basically repos, sample code, or information regarding the Cisco Data Center libraries. Let's get started. <laughs> Cisco Data Center enabled, enables IT teams to have better insights, be more efficient, and be, really have a different view of how the network operations behave. Of course, uh, during this section, uh, this uh, talk, the next 20 minutes, we don't have time to cover all of these different aspects of Cisco DNA Center. We will focus first part on compliance, the second on DevOps. How do we enable, again, network engineers and developers to use Cisco DNA Center APIs and uh, build new integrations and automate workflows? What is Cisco DNA Center compliance? When we onboard devices, uh, managing obviously your network infrastructure through Cisco Data Center is based on intent and policies. We are going to push all the configurations and everything we want from policy perspective from Cisco Data Center to devices. When we detect out of band changes, configurations changes, software upgrades that have been done uh, to a device that is not being pushed through Cisco Data Center, we are going to have a violation from a compliance perspective. With the Cisco Data Center compliance, we are going to identify changes from, let's say, startup versus running configuration. If we made a change to the running configuration, we are going to identify that that change has occurred, and uh, that's a violation we are going to flag uh, in this, uh, basically, uh, using one of these styles. There is a timer between the last change that is has occurred on a device, and actually one Cisco DNA Center will uh, let you know there is a change. This timer is five minutes, and it is designed to build stability. We don't want to send a notification after every configuration, uh, over every command you send to a device. We are looking also at critical security vulnerabilities. If we identify any devices that do not, uh, that have a software running with vulnerabilities, we are going to let you know. Software image is another one that is very popular. For example, if I do a software upgrade on a device and we have a deviation between the intent, which is the golden image that we tag for that device at that site and what's running on the device, then of course there is another violation that we are going to alert you. I covered here only three different tiles, three different compliance features we have because uh, there isn't really enough time to go in detail for all the others, but we do have a few more like uh, fabric configuration policies for wireless uh, controllers. Uh, you are going to be able to see obviously a lot more if you go to Cisco DNS Center uh, inventory and details for a device. The tiles are dynamic, will change based on what is applicable for a device. For example, if you have a switch, you're not going to have profiles for wireless devices uh, most likely available from a tile perspective. So how do we run a compliance check? First, they are automated. So they are going to be triggered by SNMP traps or notifications received from our services from Cisco DNA Center, from services within Cisco DNA Center. They are running on a schedule. Every Saturday night, we are going to run a complete scan of your infrastructure and uh, send you basically, we are going to see this uh, compliance uh, violations in the inventory page. Or you can run them on demand from here for this device or using APIs or from the device inventory, we can run a compliance uh, check for multiple devices at the same time. 
let's look at a quick demo of how we could use compliance. Uh, this demo is recorded because we have a timer, five minutes. Uh, I'm going to fast forward those five minutes. We are not going to wait for the timer uh, for the compliance violation to uh, appear on Cisco DNA Center. On the left hand side, you are seeing a WebEx space. It's a WebEx room where we receive notifications from Cisco DNA Center directly. Uh, this is a new feature that we just released uh, in the last uh, software version. On the right hand side, I'm making a configuration change. You can see already on the left hand side the notification within seconds that uh, I have an issue, a network issue, an interface connecting two network devices is down. The configuration change that I made removes also the routing configuration for BGP. I'm going to fast forward for five minutes in the demo, and we are going to see how we actually can have visibility from Cisco DNA Center into what has changed from a configuration compliance perspective. If we go to the inventory and we are looking for the device that we know from a notification perspective, uh, triggered uh, the notification that we had an issue, we can troubleshoot this problem going to compliance and we can see we have a violation between the startup and running configuration are different. We can zoom in in the last uh, few hours and we can identify easier how many and what was the configuration change. We can see here the fact that an interface was disabled and the routing protocol uh, configuration exists in the startup but does not exist in the running configuration. If I agree with these changes, I have the option to save the running configuration to startup. If I don't agree, I do have, uh, I need to find a way to actually remediate this issue. And the second use case will show you how uh, we could use these features and the APIs to actually uh, remediate the issue. Of course, I, uh, once I'm here, I can run a compliance check and identify if these devices have other problems that maybe software image I need to uh, uh, roll back to uh, the golden image, or maybe there's an application visibility issue. I've got a question around uh, configuration compliance. So something that I struggle with is wanting to maintain kind of a, a golden standard for how different uh, parts of a, a switch get configured, specifically uh, interfaces. So you've got multiple types of front panel interfaces, normal access ports, and then uplink ports. How within DNA Center compliance can you kind of write that uh, golden configuration? Is it done with, with templates that then get, get checked? Can I put in variables in there to define different types of interfaces? How does that look within DNA Center? Yeah, so from DNA Center perspective, we do have templates and we support, uh, for example, Jinja templates where I can apply variables and it's very easy to actually script within the template. And if it's a 10 gig interface or gig interface, of course, configuration may be slightly different. Uh, could be also, as you mentioned, the uplink ports versus the uh, downlink ports. The advantage of pushing templates through Cisco DNA Center, pushing those policies that you are looking is that you have also topology view. You, view. you can identify what are the uplink ports, and what are the access ports, and really be able to automate that process. Um, of course, the much larger conversation we may not be able to finish in, in during this time, but you do have the option to have a repository of all of the templates, and this will be part of the second section. You have an option to have a repository of all of your templates. This is my golden template. I want this to be applied on every switch, on every access port. And you do have the option to automate that process to scan your infrastructure. It's not part of the compliance. Uh, compliance identifies changes, but it is part of your policies and compliance where you make your policies. Every access port needs to be configured in this way. You scan the environment and you are uh, enforcing that uh, basically that will be the case. We do have uh, features uh, coming in compliance that will address your golden template and the fact that once applied, it will stay on the device, but uh, it's not here today. Okay, thank you. Uh, really quickly to the second section, um, I have a demo recorded here as well. Uh, how do we consume services from Cisco DNS Center using uh, basically uh, code? 
Um, we expose from Cisco Data Center, obviously, the REST APIs. We send notifications via webhooks. All of these can be used by, um, let's say, a developer application Python or could be any programming language. Python is very common for network engineering teams. Uh, we could use Ansible playbooks. We have a full uh, coverage for all the APIs that are exposed from Cisco Data Center uh, to be called through Ansible uh, modules. Uh, we can integrate, we are going to publish an open source project where we integrate with Jenkins from Cisco Data Center and we have a provider for Terraform. This allows network teams to build automation workflows, build integrations, uh, basically automate your processes that are not already automated by Cisco Data Center. But the core of the uh, Cisco Data Center platform capabilities that are exposed uh, to be consumed by code, we have obviously the North One REST APIs, uh, event notifications. You are going to see both being used in the next demo. And uh, of course, we build already out of uh, the box some integrations that can be used or customized by uh, our customers. So, what are the options we have? Why should we use APIs? Uh, and uh, let's say infrastructure as code for obviously service provisioning on the NA center or operations. And I'm going to touch only on a couple that are an endless list of opportunities of use cases that can be developed that we see our customers developing on top of Cisco Data Center platform. Uh, for example, you mentioned compliance checks. I can schedule a compliance check for using the Cisco Data Center compliance, but also add your own policies for your environment. I can, uh, uh, and we have uh, customers that are deploying configurations for thousands of devices through APIs. It's much more efficient, and it's uh, the uh, outcome of that effort is going to be far more consistent. Um, another one is troubleshooting. You are going to see how I can start troubleshooting uh, using code uh, during the next uh, demo. So here is the use case that I'm going to showcase next. Um, I will go to a device and make a configuration change. This will trigger a network issue. Uh, I will do exactly the same interfaces down. I'm removing the routing protocol, the BGP configuration. This will trigger Cisco DNA Center about the interface issue. And from there, through webhooks, I'm going to send a notification to a custom application. This is the proof of concept to showcase what are the abilities to use code. From that webhook receiver, I'm going to call Cisco Data Center REST APIs to learn more information regarding the issue, the device that is impacted, and uh, start to collect information regarding the starting configuration, running configuration. Then I'm going to update the user in WebEx, and I will provide to the network engineer actually a playbook uh, that they can run with Ansible to remediate the situation. There's a lot going on in this video. Again, I'm fast forwarding some steps that uh, would require, let's say, five minutes for compliance. We can see on the left-hand side the space, the WebEx room, where I'm going to receive notification. In the right-hand side is a Linux uh, webhook receiver running Flask in my lab. I'm going to make a configuration change on a device. Within a few seconds, you are going to actually see the notification being received by the webhook receiver that is uh, slightly a little bit in the background right now. And you are going to see the notification that are being sent from the webhook receiver to WebEx teams with an assessment of what is actually the issue, what we are seeing uh, in the environment. We can see, we learn about the device, the serial number, the software version, the location, and uh, this is where I'm going to fast forward because we have five minutes timer for the compliance. I'm going to fast forward and really check the compliance state of this device, but also uh, make an assessment of what should be the remediations uh, after that. So uh, fast forwarded, about uh, six minutes. I just want to be sure the compliance uh, has been actually triggered, and uh, we can uh, start a task on Cisco Data Center with REST APIs to check the compliance of this uh, device. Let me know if any questions at any time. Um, in the notifications that I sent to WebEx, we have a uh, is basically we, ha we have links to go to the Cisco DNA Center device 360 or to the compliance page of this device to learn more about what happened. Because we know we have a violation from compliance perspective. We can see the startup uh, is different comparing with the running configuration. Uh, it is very similar with the previous use case. 
uh, actually this uh, Linux uh, server is running in my uh, uh, lab constantly, so I'm still getting notifications as other engineers ne make network configuration changes uh, in my uh, environment. And uh, now we are going to actually identify what's change. And in the space in the WebEx room, I'm going to uh, advertise, basically I'm going to post information. The interface with plus means it has been added as a CLI command and with minus what has been removed from the running configuration. I'm going to download as a network engineer an Ansible playbook that has been customized for this condition, for this device, for this Cisco DNA center. If I have multiple DNA centers, I'm going to have different playbooks. For a different device would be basically a different playbook. And uh, then I can, uh, before uh, I'm giving also the command, how do you run this playbook to actually mitigate, remediate the issue that we observed in the network? Uh, we do have the option to run this, but before running, I would suggest the network engineer to actually check what do I push to the device as a configuration? What will I uh, what will I configure on the device? So we have the option to add commands, remove commands, and uh, basically execute the playbook. And then uh, basically the execution of the playbook takes about a minute. Uh, again, I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Uh, we are going to see the configuration being remediated uh, and uh, configuration being restored to the initial state. Question that on that, make sure I understand in the, the workflow here, this is a uh, configuration push from your net DevOps environment to yep. DNA center, right? Not directly to the switch. Yes, it is through DNA center to the switch. And the reason is it's much easier if I do it in this way. Uh, also, because I do it in this way, it is in band. It's not an out of band and I don't start again the process of compliance. Uh, also, I have other validations when I'm pushing configurations. I have a repository of all of these uh, CLI templates that are created on Cisco DNA Center. If I need for audit logs, go back, who created this template? Oh, it's an application. What was the template? I have versioning for templates. There's a lot richer experience from a network engineer perspective if I do it in this way. Uh, we can see the issue has been resolved. I received a notification update that the issue has been resolved. but. Uh, yeah, I push, it's very good uh, question. I'm pushing all the configuration from Ansible to Cisco DNA Center using the Ansible collection we publish and from there to devices. Okay, gotcha. And this would be uh, for just for instance, right? If I'm, if I'm bringing DNA Center online to an existing net DevOps environment, right? This, these codes and this playbooks, right? Are, are things that have, that have already been developed outside of DNA Center? Yeah, so these are outside of DNA Center. Um, actually, probably we can skip, uh, this is where you can find this use case, but we can skip to the next session if it's okay, and you'll see that. We publish from Cisco DNA Center perspective um, as a basically engagements uh, with the community. We publish a complete Python SDK. What you see from a demo perspective, I've used the Python SDK. I don't want to write code for every function, uh, if I would have to write it by hand, it would be five times longer. With the Python SDK, it's very easy. We publish an Ansible collection for everything we have APIs on Cisco DNA Center. It's covered, uh, covered through the modules. Uh, we have a Go SDK and the Terraform provider. This one is not complete. We don't have coverage for everything on DNA Center. We are going to get there. It's just a time to market and market demand, frankly. Uh, but to answer your question, this environment, what you've seen here, would like, uh, hey, I'm going to remediate the ATO issue. Exactly the same playbook can be used. Hey, I want to configure a thousand devices with these commands. You can use exactly the same playbook, could be maybe slightly different because I want to have a bit more reporting of what was successful or what was not. In this case, I'm just configuring one device. But by and large, 80% of what you have seen will be reused for other operations you have, configuration. Uh, we, you can build pro, uh, playbooks uh, or use Python SDK for provisioning devices, for sites, discovering, adding devices. You can automate the entire process. I'm going to configure a site, uh, add devices to the inventory, assign the devices to site, uh, push specific configurations, uh, software upgrades. You can automate the entire process, again, with Ansible or with the Python SDK where, hey, I identify these devices do not m m run the golden image, I'm going to schedule them for the night, let's say maintenance window, Friday at uh, 11 p.m. 
I will start the process to actually upgrade the devices. All of this can be automated using APIs that are readily available on Cisco Data Center and obviously these libraries. So another great resource, we invest a lot of time in um, obviously our presence on DevNet. Uh, DevNet is the Cisco developer organization. You can find their API documentation. Let's say if you are running in your environment an older version of Cisco DNA Center, you can find the API documentation for the new DNA Center version. You, you can play with that using sandboxes. You can build a lab and verify, okay, I have this application running in the old environment. How is it going to run in the new environment? Uh, learning labs, user guides. For those network engineers are not really quite comfortable with APIs, we have a number of tutorials, step by step by step. How do you re actually build uh, a, a workflow automation? How do you really use APIs to accomplish something that you uh, need uh, in your environment? And uh, here's a link with uh, obviously um, all the libraries for uh, our GitHub organization, Ansible, uh, Cisco DevNet, the, the presence of DNA Center and our YouTube channel.